you said something earlier that t- that sort of resonated with me. You said different people listen differently, and and there is not a one size fits all. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm assuming in, in people's listening standards. I can think of uh, as an example romantic partners. And as I was preparing for the show, I was thinking about okay, of all of all the women. Wait, that sounds bad. Of the women. Wait, listen. Mm-hmm. Of the few women I've been with, <laughs> of the each of them have women. You think? Yeah. <laughs> There's a way that there's a there's a proper way to listen and a proper way to talk, isn't there? <laughs> and, and that's the beauty of conversation, right? So, uh, of of the women that I have been uh, in in lengthy relationships with over my time, I started thinking about the different types of listening that all of them brought to the table, and because of the listening, the type of conversation that would ultimately mm-hmm. ensue, right? So, you know, I I never thought about this until I was preparing for the show or reading your book or having these conversations with you. But how important listening really is and the fact that there isn't one size that fits all and everybody brings something different to their listening conversation and every different style like in my podcast every single week it's a completely different cadence that i have to work with right so how many different if you or even is that even the proper question (laughs) in your research is there sort of a um, specific types of listeners that most people can be lumped into yeah, so we've researched about 28,000 folks and, and there's four archetypes of the barriers that create impediments and friction for listening. But before we talk about that, I just do want to go back and be very clear with everybody that a great listener will change the way a speaker expresses their idea. Mm-hmm. And, and thinking of those wonderful women you talked about, they could all get a conversation out of you that was different because they showed up differently. Yeah, that that's exactly where I was going with that. It's it's sort of like when I sat to sorry, um, I just have to interject this because I'll forget it. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about all the different types of conversations and each one of my partners has has brought a different type of conversation to the dynamic. And in every single one of them, when you really start pointing back to how the conversation would either blossom or not, it was the engaging with that person and how they would listen and then respond. Like when I speak with you, you're very, you wait, you pause, you reflect for a second you think about what I said. I mean, you can actively see it sort of going on. I know it's become like a, an autotomic cadence for you, but nonetheless, I can see you sort of thinking about it, rehearsing your response and moving forward. And every single partner was unique in their own right. Just like that. Right. Yeah, and and could you see any patterns of difference in the way they they approached it? Were some asking questions about the relationship versus you, or or a particular incident? But you know, when you think about the different patterns, you can see now with the benefit of time. What were the patterns that you were noticing? Yeah, that's a great point, and and I did think about that. Because I've actually thought about this before, just in, in a sense, I'm always fascinated by dynamics of people and how they engage with each, with each other. Like it's one of the most. If, if I were to leave my current career, I would sort of go into studying that aspect. I don't know what that would be called: linguistics, relationship. I'm not really sure what that would look like, but right. I'm fascinated how people's energies bounce off each other. And to answer your question, yeah, one of them was a bit argumentative, of the of the uh, you know, sh- and and there were several that could sort of fall into that, just kind of like really relishing the debate of things. And then there would be another one that was very passive that just wouldn't respond a lot. So I can see that category where they're just more like considering everything. That doesn't mean that they don't have a response, but they're not quick to like retort to something. And then I noticed a third and a fourth style. And the third was very interrogative, sort of these are the types of things that they wanted to know. They wanted to get more information out of me. So I could see a, a camp of women that fell into that camp. And then the fourth one that I was able to sort of categorize these partners into would be sort of, I don't know what the term would be, sort of like a sardonic, deprecating, almost co- comical type of thing. Everything sort of, they wanted to make everything sort of witty and fun. And so, and anyway, so yeah. So f- I, I was able to categorize four different types of responses that I would have funneled the different long-term relationships I've had into those categories. Which one did you connect with the most? Which style? A combination of interrogative and comical. I like Hmm. lighthearted. I like lighthearted people. I love people who don't take themselves too seriously and are able to take a situation and sort of with a grain of salt, if you will, and be able to be pragmatic and sensible about stuff as opposed to just like everything has to be dramatic and and intense. And, And then, but at the same time, it makes me feel good as a conversant with someone who's 
also asking questions. It makes you sort of feel like they're very actively listening and they they want a little bit more out of it. So but a combination between those two, three and four. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful noticing. It takes a certain level of reflexiveness and maturity to kind of look back and to be able to distill not only what you noticed in that, but also what was attractive for mm-hmm. you in that as well. And the same is true. That plays out for your clients as well. There'll be a certain style of client that's attractive for you. 100%. In fact, I just had an interview, literally an interview before this podcast with a a large client that um, we're courting. I'm trying to date another person and so I can classify them and categorize them in my listening styles, but on the, on the business level and the, the guy that I, that was, uh, that it was, we were meeting with. He was very interrogative. He had all these questions and he just wanted, he was trying to find what the good fit was, but what's really cool about him, there's two types of interrogative people that I've encountered. There's the interrogative listener and the interrogative commenter and the person who will ask questions, but they're only questions for their own purpose. They're not questions to hear what you actually have to say. And this cat, he wanted to know, and he listened really well. He was sort of like you, he paused and he reflected. He considered it. And then he would have a follow-up question to that, which made me under, made me feel like he actively heard what I had to say. So, But I had another interview with another client last week where no matter what I said, they just flipped it around. I was like, dude, you don't, listening is like the podcast guy back through three or four years ago. You didn't hear a word I said. You just literally just, you're going down a list. Check, 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 check. So yeah. 